This thing. conference will now be recorded. Awesome. So welcome. I'd like to welcome you to Coffee with Nahara. Um, and I, I want to first apologize. I'm getting over a really bad cold, so I hope I don't sneeze or cough while I'm speaking. For those who do not know me, my name is Jana Borland. I'm the Association Director for the National Native American Human Resources Association. And for those who are joining us for the first time, Nahara is a tribal-led nonprofit organization focused on the HR profession and tribal leadership. We are committed to our members every day of the year as we truly understand human resources and leadership. Historically, the association started as a grassroots effort with four tribes meeting to network and share personal challenges and solutions. The meetings evolved into conferences and soon the membership grew into a formal Northwest and then a national association. We are now in our 27th year of existence and continuing to advance and advocate for Native American tribes. For more information, I, I highly recommend you visit our website. It's Nahara, N-N-A hra.org for information on resources, including certification programs that Nahara offers, webinars, annual conferences, and summits. Speaking about summits, we're going to be hosting um, a mental health awareness summit this May at the Palms Casino. And if you would like any information on this topic um, and registration, please visit our Nahara website. Today, I am so excited to present our premier partners, Nava Benefits. The Nava Knots, Marcelo Combo, Partner Marketing Director, and Nick Manson, I hope I'm not butchering your name, Nick, Mansonotti, Founding Senior Benefits Advisor, in this session, they will review how to easily level up your benefits without sacrificing your bottom line. We're entering a year where most companies need to do with more with less. While benefits will never disappear, the pressure is on employees and senior leadership to get the most bang for their buck. So how can we achieve this? Brandon and Nick will, sh will show us how to get the most out of our benefits spend. They will equip us with tactics and tools to measure the effectiveness of our existing benefits package, find the high ROI pockets, and better market our benefits to employees to increase usage and satisfaction. Please use your chat box. I know the Navinots are very, uh, they love interaction. Once again, today's session will be recorded and will be available for you on our YouTube channel at Nahara. So without further ado, I will turn it over to you, Brandon. Actually, Brandon was our prior speaker. He's our CEO, but Marcel, but either way. Oh, thank I'm you. sorry, Marcel, Marcel. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, no worries about that. So again, thank you so much for joining us, uh, you know, for uh, hopefully um, a few minutes uh, out of your day to join us for coffee with Nahara. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, uh, we sponsor quite a fair amount of HR conferences. Uh, I think I speak on behalf of the Nava team, uh, the Nahar folks are the most gracious and most fun bunch. So we've been a sponsor going back to, uh, I want to say around this time last year. Um, hopefully we met a few of you folks over in Hawaii and we also attended a few months later over uh, in San Antonio. And we will be there in Arizona, so hopefully we can connect then. So uh, let's go on to the first slide. So, but first let's get acquainted. Um, my name is Marcel. I've got my certified employee benefits uh, specialization, uh, specialist designation. It's like getting your MBA in benefits. I am a partner and market director here at NAVA. Prior to joining NAVA, I was with the world's largest insurance broker, uh, which is Marsh, uh, where I spent nine years and I was there as a, as a principal focused on the self-insured and complex accounts. Uh, my, um, really what I enjoyed do, uh, doing was breaking apart health plan, putting back together. I had joined NAVA really specific for the mission of fixing healthcare. I mean, you guys see it, it's 
uh, practically unaffordable, hard to use, confusing, all of, uh, all of the frustration that you see is what we aim to fix. So that's enough about me. I'll flip it over to Nick for his introduction. Cool, Nick Mancinati here. Um, joined Nava about nine months ago and spent the previous seven years in the employee benefits space in the great state of Ohio. Um, but joined Nava for the same reasons that most of our team, as well as Marcel, joined Nava and that the healthcare system is broken. We're seeing family premiums in excess of $2,000 on a monthly basis. And that's before the family even pays a dollar out of their own pocket for healthcare services. And so year over year costs continue to go up, at least since I entered the industry back in 2015, it's been the same message each and every year. Here's your renewal increase. And employees are still confused as to how to access high quality care and where to go when they need care the most. And so we're here to uh, hopefully enlighten you all on some different strategies and approaches you can take to make healthcare simpler and more affordable for you and your employees. Fantastic. So again, we love you guys. <laughs> we are absolutely pandering to the crowd. <laughs> so, uh, but yes. So um, again, um, you know what? We'll, what what are we are going to be doing in Arizona is we're going to be um, doing what we did before, hosting uh, dinners, and hopefully, if we couldn't find it in the budget, we'll give out drink tickets again. I think that's our <laughs> calling card. Um, but uh, again, just really wanted to uh, say that we absolutely support your mission, Nahara. And in uh, and, and today's conversation, we're absolutely going to see what we can do to, to level up your benefits. So um, again, the context of today's conversation is really surrounding the macroeconomic environment. So you guys see the price of eggs, right? I think the last thing I saw was 70% uh, increase, all the way to uh, nurses negotiating for higher wages. And guess what's, what's going to happen, right? End of the day, it's going to trickle all the way to your renewals. Uh, and it's never a fun conversation as a broker when I have to come back and say, hey, you guys have performed well in your health plan, but because of the macroeconomic environment uh, due to inflation, we got to deliver like a 9% renewal or whatever it may be. Um, I believe in California, Anthem, uh, Blue Cross last year, their um, initial out the gate renewal for those that were healthy was about, uh, about 13%. So um, again, that speaks volumes with with regards to what's going on in the benefit space. It's not getting any, any easier, okay? Um, we're uh, uh, forecasted to be going to recession. Um, so uh, just a quick heads up, um, really, you guys see it on, on, on your um, day to day, right? HR teams are incredibly uh, doing a lot more, a lot less um, and, and, and so forth. So there we go. So really, what are we going to do here today uh, to make it digestible, okay, um, where we can level up your benefits, again, getting the most bang for your buck, okay? If you're like me, I try to squeeze as much as I can in my day-to-day, -day, which means, you know, uh, for some of you that are, are Starbucks drinkers, right, uh, I'm on the app, try to accrue as much um, stars as possible, although uh, just a, as a testament to, uh, to inflation, um, if you guys follow Starbucks, right, they had devalued their star points. So you're going to be able to getting, getting less for, for that rewards. So um, before we take a step further, um, you know, let's get um, people engaged. And uh, I, I, in case you joined us late, we are uh, going to be doing raffles for Star Starbucks gift cards for $10 uh, per, per poll. Um, but before um, we get started, is um, really when was the last time uh, you guys um, got uh, 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 with, with, hold on, there's a question here. How often do you guys survey your employees? Anybody in the chat? Well, while that's going on, we're going to go on to the first bullet point here with regards to measuring the effectiveness of your current benefits offering. So really, um, the first thing we, we like to call out is surveying your employees, okay? Like, what, what exactly are we um, spending, uh, you know, our dollars on, right? You want to make sure you're, um, you've, everybody's got limited budget, limited resources. We want to make sure that we driving, we're driving those dollars into things that people use, right? It makes no sense to um, put in an infertility benefit when you're seeing, uh, when you're, a, a, you know, a manufacturing company where your average demographic might be males in their 50s, okay? So that's a uh, that's an easy call out. So um, additionally, um, what can what have you seen that's being provided from uh, from your from the com competitive landscape, and be able to take your survey results and comparing that with what other people have been doing. 
Uh, the next bullet point here is again going back to what I said uh, prior is benchmarking against your peers. Um, if you are um, um, in hospitality, for instance, right, you're trying to um, hire uh, servers, okay, they may not necessarily uh, be um, working the casino, but th th these are people you're trying to pull from uh, other, other metros. What are they offering to be able to make their, uh, their, uh, their benefit package sticky? And also making sure that you are one step ahead of that curve to be able to set the tone uh, with regards to competitiveness. Uh, RFP your broker. Uh, when was the last time you shopped at your broker? Do you know how much they're getting compensated? Uh, what are some of the deliverables? Uh, Nick and I were on a call, I want to say two weeks ago, right, Nick, where uh, you know they said, you know what, I don't know what I don't know. Um, that's why I took this call is because you know I haven't put out my broker in over a decade. So I don't know what kind of technology they offer. I don't know what kind of negotiating capacity that they have to get something for nothing. Um, and again, you know, when putting on all formal RFP will help you uncover certain things that other brokers are doing. Uh, assessing employee enrollment and utilization. Uh, the, uh, I mean, again, going back to serving your employees, but taking a step further is um, what, uh, you know, if you guys are offering EAP, how often are people actually calling the EAP? Okay, if you're seeing that there's a lot of participation EAP where they're hitting the maximum uh, consult, uh, consults, maybe we should look at other EAPs that um, offer above and beyond what's being currently offered. Or if you see utilization that's towards mental health, then maybe we look at a point solution where mental health is front and center. So I think we got some uh, people participating in the chat here. All right. So we got uh, surveys, uh, you know, quarterly. I see a few of those quarterly. Uh, there's one that hasn't established uh, a timeline yet, so that's uh, so certainly something uh, you should do. Uh, benefits once a year, okay. <clears throat> quarterly would be good. So it's my opinion that you got to do at least uh, twice a year, right? Uh, you know, strategic planning meeting, uh, uh, going to renewal, you should absolutely do. Another one that, that could be a, a good lift is, uh, you know, post open enroll. A survey, seeing how that went, um, you know, um, how, what they thought of how the process went and so forth. All right, Nick, you want to take this slide? Yeah, roll them on in. So the top five questions to either ask yourself or to ask your broker before your next renewal. And there's a number of things, you know, as Mar Marcel alluded to on the last slide in terms of RFP and finding the right broker partner. But we think these are top five before your next health insurance and benefits renewal that you should be asking yourself. So are we leveraging technology for open enrollment decision support and year round benefits support for employees? And so, as you know, employees most oftentimes have a myriad of health plan options to choose from. So ask yourself, are they enrolling in the best plan for them? Or are they enrolling in a plan potentially paying too much and over-insuring themselves? And so there's technologies out there today that, that help employees navigate to the best plan for them. And of course, you can't always predict into the future. And so you can't predict what you know, medical expenses someone is going to have throughout the course of the year, but you can certainly you know, per, try to predict it on the front end and, and get that employee into the right plan that's best for them throughout the course of the year. And then for year-round benefits support, I'm sure most of you have employees that come to you for questions regarding benefits throughout the course of the year. I read a stat that you know human resources professionals typically handle anywhere from 100 to about 200 hours of benefit-related questions per year. And so that's a significant amount of time. Do you have a broker partner that provides that year-round support to employees through technology? Number two, what can be taken off HR's plate next year? As Marcel said, your plates are more full than ever. The expectations and responsibilities that you've taken on have significantly grown throughout the last couple of years, let alone five or 10 years. And so are there things that your broker could be taking off your plate that they're not doing today? Do we have our renewal 90 plus days in advance? So this is our favorite as as a competitor looking in to, to hopefully work with a lot of groups that we try to work with, oftentimes the groups that we're talking to don't receive their renewal until a month and a half or two and a half months out from their effective date. Whereas if you are a large employer, 100 
or more employees on your health insurance plan, your renewal is typically ready 120 days out from your renewal date. Your broker should be receiving that renewal 120 days out from your renewal date. If you are a small employer under 100 employees, typically that, that timeline is about 90 days from your renewal. So just know that your renewal is available 90 plus days out from, from your effective date and that you should be getting that in your hands as soon as it is released. Mm -hmm. And so we understand that uh, if you're self-insured, by the way, that uh, th th that 90 days might change, right? Because then you have to go through the disclosure period, all that other fun stuff when you're locking down stop loss coverage. But again, a good rule of thumb is at least three months, right? Because yeah, the last thing you want to do is be put in a corner with regards to open enrollment, and then you're being reactive rather than proactive. What digital health solutions should we consider specific to our employee population? And so you can take a look at potentially claims data. If you have a high diabetic population, you could look at putting a diabetes management program through a digital health solution. Or if you have a high, let's say, younger population of females, you could put in a maternity digital health solution. So it's really dependent on your demographic and the overall health of your employee population to look at what digital health solutions are best going forward. And then the last but not least, what cost saving strategies can we deploy with minimal disruption to employees? And so looking at you know, the sheer cost of healthcare, right? Going like this over the last couple of years, five, 10 years and so forth, there are solutions out there that you can layer on top of your current plan that lead to lower cost and better benefits for employees. And so when we reference minimal disruption, that would be, let's say you're with United Healthcare today, you can stay with United Healthcare going forward and simply change the way that you're funding healthcare and the way that you pay premiums that would lead to a better plan and lower cost for employees. Mm -hmm. And, and so uh, to kind of build upon that, right? So, um, you know, this is applicable to those that are fully insured and self-insured. There's little tweaks you can do, okay, to be able to um, pro get, get the most bang for your buck, okay? And we'll, we'll unpack that uh, in our, our further slides. So before we take a step further, I kind of just want to pause and just uh, get um, a better understanding uh, with today's audience. Um, how many of you guys are self-insured versus uh, uh, fully insured. So if you could go put it, drop it in the chat. Uh, again, uh, what's up for stake here is, you know, Starbucks on, on us here. All right. Well, while we're waiting for that, let's proceed. So um, finding ROI in your, in your pockets, okay, first and foremost is asking for data, okay? So uh, typically when you're fully insured, you might not get as much data, right? You're not going to get, uh, you know, granular information as far as um, you know, who's taking what drugs, you know, uh, uh, the dependent uh, condition, right? Like if you have dependents uh, taking high medication, high cost medication, you're probably not going to get that. But nevertheless, it, it would be very impactful both on the, not just the medical, but the ancillaries, EAP, what have you, is to start asking for data, see what um, kind of data you can get. Okay. W with every state, it, it's going to be a little bit different. With every carrier, it's going to be a little bit different. So uh, the first thing that I would tell my clients is like, you know, don't ask, don't get, right? You, you got to make sure you keep um, probing and asking uh, to see what kind of information you can leverage for your upcoming renewal and also isolating, uh, you know, that information uh, for future uh, results. So uh, audit uh, your uh, answer lines of coverage. So, you know, I'll flip this over to Nick as far as, you know, what he thinks about this one. Yeah, the ancillary lines, that's defined as life, disability, dental, vision, voluntary products like accident, critical illness, and cancer policies. So anything that's outside of the core major medical program. In our opinion, it's low-hanging fruit. And actually, I'll use a, a case study example here. We just started working with a Nahara member, but Prairie Bands, Potawatomi Nation out of Kansas. And about one week into our partnership, we helped them avoid about 20K or about 15% in renewal increases on their life and disability insurance, as well as negotiating in a two-year rate guarantee versus a one-year rate guarantee. And we were able to accomplish this one week into our partnership. And so it's a very low lift. Like I said, it's low hanging fruit. Oftentimes it gets overlooked during the renewal process because so much time and attention is focused on the health insurance piece. 
that the ancillary lines are something that don't get chopped out to the market or that just is something you don't want to move. But when you look at ancillary lines, we find oftentimes that most companies are overpaying for life, disability, dental vision, and so forth. And so we highly recommend uh, taking a look at your ancillary lines, shopping it, whether it's at the time of your health insurance renewal or shopping it, what we call off cycle throughout the middle of the course of the year. Mm -hmm. and, and so to building upon a Nick's uh, point there, uh, when you're looking at uh, ancillary lines, the first thing uh, to, uh, to look at is, uh, uh, of course, the rates, right? That's the easy part. What's just as important is looking at the contract language, right? So when you're looking at, for instance, life insurance, there's going to be um, um, a, a de degradation in the contract, right? Uh, the older you get, meaning that, you know, they'll cover 100% of, of face value on the death benefit all the way to social se uh, security normal retirement age. So what you can do is say, hey, you know, as a condition for renewal, we want to extend that out to all the way to 70. And so you have certain carriers that will say, hey, you know, it's low cost to us, but we will uh, extend that on the condition of, of open enrollment or renewing with, uh, with you guys here. Additionally, looking um, at your disability contracts, that's another thing that's important, right? Well, the definition of disability. So uh, that's another thing that you should absolutely leverage uh, your broker as far as like ONOC versus ENIOC. Uh, it may be, uh, you know, awesome for your executive to, you know, get, you know, a disability, uh, you know, um, pay payout when they go uh, skiing to get in an accident, okay? But what does that mean after two years where now it falls into any occupation, meaning that, hey, you can work at McDonald's now. You are now, uh, now not going to be covered under a contract. So again, looking at the contract language and seeing what you can get uh, on the condition of renewing with your ancillary carriers. Hey, Marcel, one more point on that as well. The more I think about this, the more that comes to my mind. But uh, looking at dental, so dental is low hanging fruit as well. Most companies fully insure dental, meaning you pay a fixed premium to a dental carrier and they pay all of your dental claims. But when looking at dental, it's not nearly as volatile as health insurance. Dental, there's very rarely a large claim, but when you look at dental, consider self-funding dental. It's an opportunity to cut anywhere from 15 to 30% of your dental cost out of your plan just simply by paying your claims on your own and hiring a third-party administrator to administer your program. All right. Uh, again, so going back to what we just mentioned above two, uh, two bullet points, says shop the market. You may be uh, in a two-year rate guarantee or they might have a rate pass, but that's uh, the easy stuff, right? It's being able to shop and say, hey, you know, um, uh, MetLife or, uh, you know, New York Life or whichever carrier, Guardian, um, you know, they all have uh, certain strong uh, superpowers, okay? One might be stronger at dental, one might be better at life insurance, but um, and it changes, you know, year over year. So you should absolutely look at the market. Um, you know, if you, you're getting some a quote back and, and they say, hey, you know, it's a rate pass, you should kind of question a rate pass. Like, well, have we been performing really well where you're not, you're giving us a rate pass, okay? So again, um, you know, don't ask, don't get. If there's a recurring theme is always see if you can get something for nothing. And to that point as well, with, with a rate pass, that's what I would consider the easy button. It's the easy button for your employers. It's the easy button for your broker partner. We're willing to do the work and most brokers should be doing the work every single year to keep your current carriers in check because oftentimes like Marcel and I have alluded to, you're simply overpaying for the coverages that you have in place today. And so to keep those carriers in check, you have to shop the market. Mm -hmm. Leveraging Southern health advantages. And so some of you may be familiar with what these are, but they're unique advantages to tribal entities throughout the country. There are things like paying for health care at Medicare-like rates, there's the opportunity for individual ACA plan premium sponsorship to where you can take employees that exceed a certain claim threshold and place them onto the ACA individual marketplace. And once their claims come back down below that threshold, they can come back onto the group health care plan. There's also federal funds for, for claims exceeding 25,000. Um, and there's also, some of you may be familiar with the 340B pharmacy program, which allows tribal entities to use federal funds to buy essentially drugs at a discount. Now these sovereign health advantages are only available 
through self-insuring your health insurance program. So if you're fully insured, you're not able to access these, but there's very technical, high-powered third-party administrators that that are, are very, you know, well-versed in the, in the sovereign health advantages that are out there that can help you take advantage of these going forward. So by the way, uh, talking about uh, um, sovereign health advantages, so we did a, a talk um, over in San Antonio. So we can unpack unpack that for an hour and talk specifically about the sovereign health advantages. So uh, we're not gonna do that here today. <laughs> um, we really wanted to uh, focus uh, you know, our conversation today in the 30,000 foot view. Uh, and be able to uh, see what we can do to um, get something for nothing, right? Keeping it easy and seeing what we can, what kind of juice we can squeeze out, out of that lemon. The second piece is negotiating wellness credits. Sometimes these are called health engagement or health initiative funds, but these are provided by health insurance carriers and it can range anywhere from five to 10,000 for small employers, upwards of 50,000. I've seen a $50,000 wellness credit Marcel, I know you've seen some large wellness credits in your days, yes. but uh, these wellness credits are not typically just provided by your health insurance carrier. They typically have to be requested by your broker partner. And oftentimes they are granted, but like I said, they have to be requested for. And there's a correlation. Carriers want to provide employers wellness credits, right? It helps em employers keep their employees healthy. And you can use these funds for a variety of things outside of um, or just a variety of things in general, such as on-site cooking, um, on-site massages or therapy, gym stipends for employees, or um, looking at your health plan directly like health management programs, as I alluded to earlier, a diabetes management program, and so forth. So there's a number of things you can utilize these wellness credits for. It depends on the carrier, but make sure that your broker is asking for these credits from your health insurance carrier on an annual basis. And so uh, typically the way wellness, um, sometimes it, um, it can be bundled in with technology credits. So if you have a Ben Advent system you really like, certain carriers will actually um, you know, lump those two, uh, two buckets together. But um, it does not come from your renewal. It actually comes from a marketing budget set aside by the carrier, okay? I'm not gonna say all carriers do it this way, but the majority of them do, okay? So with, with Anthem Blue Cross out here in California, that's coming from the marketing budget. Same thing, I believe, with Voya. So if you've got life insurance with Voya and say, hey, you know what, well, as a condition of uh, rolling out voluntary benefits, right, like critical illness and um, an accident, we want to have, uh, you know, a wellness credit. So you could typically negotiate, I think, from Voy off the top of my head, anywhere from one to three percent of premium. Um, and typically, that you know, voluntary benefits is paid for by the um, uh, by the employee. So then, what you're doing is you, then you're taking those monies and reinvesting it back in the in, in the in the health and welfare fund. So um, some uh, some food for thought there. Okay, personally for me. Um, um, I always hit up the carriers uh, every single time and say, hey, what else can you do to Sweden offer, okay? So then they might do a combination of like wellness credits, okay? They might say, hey, we'll do, um, you know, wellness credits and we'll also increase uh, the guaranteed issue in the life insurance. We'll go from $100,000 of guaranteed issue all the way to 150000 So what guaranteed issue means, okay, um, means that they will not ask any sort of uh, medical questionnaire uh, or pre-existing conditions from uh, rolling out uh, life insurance coverage from zero to $150,000 uh, of face value in that example. So again, don't ask, don't get. And the last piece of the puzzle here is assess prescription claims. And so we've all seen the wild west that the prescription drug world is today. There's commercials you know, on television, um, their advertising budgets are through the roof. You look at prescription drugs in comparison to medical spend, about 10 years ago, prescription drugs consisted of about 10% of overall healthcare spend, whereas medical was 90%. Now prescription drugs make up about 25% of all healthcare expenditures, where medical is 75%. The expectation is that it's going to be a 50-50 split between prescription drugs and medical over the next 10 years. And so RX costs, where medical is going like this, RX is going like this. It's literally a vertical year-over-year -year increase in cost. It's low-hanging fruit. And when you look at the overall consumption and utilization of drugs, 10% of all drugs are brand name, whereas 90% are generic. 
but 75% of the drug spend is related to brand drug utilization. And so the goal is here, look at your overall prescription drug spend, see what the breakdown is versus drug spend versus medical. Also take a look at what your drug spend is generic versus brand utilization. Is there an opportunity to move you know, employees that are taking high cost brand drugs today down to generic alternatives? There potentially are. It depends on your pharmacy contract. Now, if you're fully insured, you do not have a say in your, in your pharmacy contract. Typically, when you look at fully insured carriers like United Healthcare, which owns their pharmacy contract PBM called Optum, then you have Aetna, which Aetna was actually purchased by a pharmacy contract manager, ex, no, not Express Scripts, that's Cigna, but Aetna was purchased by CVS Caremark. So a PBM bought a health insurance carrier. That's how much money is on the prescription drugs side of things. And so when you look at, you know, if you're self-funded, you have the opportunity to what they call carve out your pharmacy strategy and work with a PBM that is, is completely independent from the health insurance carriers. And oftentimes, simply by working with an independent PBM, if you're self-funded, simply by changing your contract, you can cut out a third or 30% of your overall pharmacy spend, which would break down to roughly about 10% of your overall healthcare spend. So there's a lot of different opportunities when it comes to pharmacy. Um, we just think it's really low hanging fruit and going forward, it should be something that you pay a close attention to because as pharmacy costs continue to increase, there's gonna be continuous you know, opportunities year over year to, to save more and more money on prescription drugs. So we're gonna flip the script a little bit, um, you know, before we take a step further, um, you know, any chance uh, you guys can drop in the chat, uh, um, whether or not you guys are currently taking advantage of wellness credits. I know Alex had just posted on the chat, but just uh, figured uh, we'd, we'd get, gauge some feedback here. And by the way, if you guys have uh, questions, just drop in the chat. Uh, we'd certainly love to address any concerns or questions you may have. All right. so. Um, Going into your, your benefits, okay, um, uh, what's really key is increasing uh, employee uh, uh, experience, okay, and member engagement. Uh, first and foremost, education is, is key to success. Um, yes, that's calling out the obvious there, but, um, and so part of the reason why we put this on here is going back to prior slides, in order to have a successful education campaign, you need to have the renewal, right, uh, um, in, in advance. If you don't know where you're going to end up landing or what as the broker, right? What are we gonna be doing to educate them on, right? We don't even know what plan we're gonna be rolling out. So, um, you know, there's new uh, plans out there uh, with uh, more wrinkles than ever to mitigate uh, uh, against costs. Like for instance, if you're fully insured, there's this strategy called gap funding, okay? So, which means that if you're a very rich uh, HMO plan, for instance, zero deductible here in California, okay, that's pretty common, or you are on a PPO 500 or PPO 1000, okay, nationally. What you do, uh, you know, with the gap funding is you buy down to the cheapest plan. It might be a PPO 5000. OK, and now what you're doing is you're banking the savings and you're going to put the money on um, on uh, a MasterCard and giving out to all your employees. So what I've seen is when it's successfully rolled out, the minimum savings I've seen is about eight hundred dollars per employee per year for the exact same benefits for the exact same network. OK, but it's an additional wrinkle that you got to educate your employees on. OK, and in order for that to uh, be successful, you need to roll that thing out no less than about 45 days in advance of your anticipated change. Ideally, you know, more time the better, but we understand that you got to do carrier negotiations and doing all that fun stuff. Um, uh, providing a, a comprehensive benefits guide to employees. OK, so. Um, um, a lot of uh, Navinots here, okay? Uh, we affectionately call ourselves Navinots, right? So um, um, we came from a, a national firms, so, uh, most of us have, okay? From Aon, Marsh, USI, Mercer, you name it, okay? Um, and we've been stunned, okay, by some of the, the benefit guides that we've seen from competitors. A lot of them are pretty ugly, <laughs> but, uh, and also a lot of them do not leverage technology. So there's, um, 
a multi-tiered approach to engage your different generations okay there's going to be some that are still working okay like like my aunts and, uh, and uncles who are in their uh, in the 60s okay where for them it's like hey if it's not a phone call and it's not a paper i don't care okay uh, so the physical component uh, is going to matter okay uh, and, and then it's going to be different with your TikTok generation right those that are graduating from college right now where for them it's like paper what's that about okay and so um, what kind of technology is out there to be able to engage uh, engage them so for us here at Nava what we did is we developed our own Nava benefits app okay um, but what I, what I'm trying to say here is you know what kind of technology that you guys can get for close to nothing okay or for free altogether Okay, so going back to what we said earlier is if you can negotiate from the carrier's technology credits, okay, you might be able to get those apps for free. You might be able to get a Ben admin system uh, implemented at uh, minimal cost or to no cost to you guys. So again, so just some, some uh, thoughts regarding strategy there. Uh, additionally, offering relevant benefits to fit the needs of your employees, okay? So um, what I would re uh, request from your current brokers, hey, can you do a, a multi-generational study uh, on behalf of my population? Okay, it's not you know, uh, incredibly difficult, right? You're going off date of births. So then what you, uh, their actuary would do or, or uh, whoever is their uh, analyst um, is they can start to populate a multi-generational uh, curve, okay? And say that, hey, we have about 10% that are uh, you know, millennials, we have 5% that's centennials, but we have a lot of people here that's, uh, that are, uh, you know, uh, Gen X and baby boomers, right? For them, what's going to matter more is about retirement uh, and, and uh, caregiving and what have you. So let's focus and dial that thing in. And so now, you know, not everybody here has got the budget of, let's say, Google, although, you know, if you're paying attention to the news, even they've, like, laid off people. So, um really trying to find uh, you know uh, what kind of pockets to drive home uh you know benefits that 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 will matter to the majority of your employees again um, leveraging technology okay it's uh it's not a panacea okay it's not uh, the end all be all but it does help uh you with regards to being strategic okay so if you're um, self-insured for instance there's going to be a uh, data um you know uh, analytics that's going to be available that can do predictive modeling so some of this cool stuff like the, the benefits geeks like me and, and, and nick here will truly enjoy uh working with is going to be able to trend down uh you know cost by leveraging technology okay but conversely you'll know a lot more about your population as far as like what kind of claims that that's impacting them on a day-to-day -day basis um, and, and so forth. So, um, you know, I'll pause there. I know we, I just uh, spent a good uh, few minutes here talking about uh, employee engagement, but um, again, uh, drop in the chat here, okay? Trying to give you guys as much opportunities uh, with regards to uh, the Starbucks gift cards here is, um, um, are you currently uh, leveraging technology to offer decision support, okay? And ongoing, uh, you know, employee support for your benefits. So feel free to drop that in the chat. And I do see some in the chat here. Okay, so pertain to wellness credits, there's a lot of uncertainty there. So absolutely, this is a good opportunity for you guys to uh, pose that question. All right, so we are here at uh, Q and A. Um, uh, you know, we went through a ton. We wanted to. Uh, take about 40, 45 minutes, and I think we're there uh, talking uh, about our piece. So um, with that, I'll open up the floor. All right, so we have somebody says that their analyst pulls the data together and uh, you and utilizes their benefit survey to pull demographic, demographic information. That is amazing, great job. Maybe. They're taking other... it easy on us, Marcel. What's up? They're taking it easy on us. I know they totally are. Or maybe they're going to save it for uh, for Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. Now we're going to do the wheel of names here. So uh, assuming that we did this thing correctly, we're going to pull to see what kind of winners. Oh, here we go. Let's see. Alex, do we, uh, wait, let me see here. Let's give out, let me see what, how many did I see on here? We're gonna give out five here today, guys. 
Okay, Barbara mentioned uh, it's helpful to review the meds and which are being uh, which are most used and perhaps becoming generic in the next year. Awesome call out, Barbara. All right, so the first winner, let's do it. All right, Robin French, you are our first winner. All right, by the way, Alex will be sending that to you guys. Debbie Collins, oh, oh. two out of five. I'm telling you, Debbie, you are killing it. As we said, the more you participate, right? You get more, uh, more pulls. All right, is that is that day? I think I, hopefully I got your name right. If not, I'm sorry, man. Last winner here. I'm telling you, Debbie, you you should go out and buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> <laughs> if if only. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So I think that concludes our uh, chat here today. Um, uh, feel free to do uh, reach out to, uh, to us if you guys have any questions. Uh, my email address is marcel at navabenefits.com. It's uh, truly been a pleasure. Um, we uh, look forward to the continued engagement with Nahara. Hold on. I see three uh, folks in the chat. Um, but yes, any final words here, Nick uh, or Alex? Just thank you very much for having us. We're excited about this partnership. We're excited to see you all at the Mental Health Summit, as well as the uh, annual conference next September. I was just going to say, come out and meet Nava in May. We will be, all of us will be at the Palms Casino on May 11th and 12th. And we'll they're going to educate us on maximizing your EAP programs at work so super excited to see y'all so see you in vegas thank see you in you. arizona thanks everybody thanks everyone thank you have a good day we'll be sending out a sample survey as well as a sample rfp and some follow-up um, emails so keep an eye open for those thanks, thanks everybody everyone. thank you thank you Alex, how are we doing on your on your on your steps? Let's see. We are at eighteen hundred just during this time. I'll take it. <coughs> Bye, everybody.